the things that I really enjoy is you're highlighting the degree to which you know a lot of the arguments for pumping money into the, these internal improvements was on the importance of building up you know, the, 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 the perception that state investment, that private investment in roads, canals, and all the things needed for internal trade would, would not be up to what was necessary uh, to, to, to kind of get the economy gr- going. But as you point out, you know, the, the economy of America was greatly influenced by what was going on in Europe and the degree to which that attracted capital to the shipping industry and, and New England interests, I think, in particular, taking advantage of the trade embargoes going on with Europe. You know, there, there was marketplaces for these goods paying very, very good money because of the disruptions in, you know, uh, Atlantic trade, European trade, that you know, some of the arguments being made in favor of in the spending aspect that came after the purchase itself, you know, the, the economic analysis is is not as complete uh, as as you know, if we look a, a much broader scale at what's going on globally. Yeah, so this is this is a great point, and this is especially an issue in traditional American history because they say, well, you you have to have the government build roads, you have to have the government build infrastructure. So, well, even if you had potential problems, well, this is just the only way it could be. We even see this today, you know, with infrastructure bill, uh, whatever. Just assume that well, the government has to be in charge of infrastructure, and that's just simply not true. One, uh, there was private uh, roads and, and, you know, with some government assistance on the state and local level, but it was generally minor. Uh, Roads were built to connect towns. Uh, Merchants would pay for the construction of the roads, even though they might not get a direct return on the road, but they would get the indirect return through more commerce coming into the town, boosting their sales and so on. So you did have private enterprise uh, produce what, what are traditionally thought of as public goods, and that these privatized roads, canals, railroads later on, etc., cetera, inexorably were much more efficient than the government enterprises. Okay, and I did love, I loved it when I found that explanation. I think it was by this engineer Benjamin Latrobe, and he brings this up, and I said, oh, this is such a genius explanation that. Well, one of the reasons why uh, there was a relative lack of funds for private infrastructure during this time period was not due to the fault of the free market. It's just that so much private investment was going into the shipping industry because it was very profitable for Americans to kind of play both sides and to engage in smuggling and to ship goods to uh, nations at war with each other. And that this was a diversion. This is a government diversion of funds. This wasn't uh, you know, entirely done by the private sector. So in the absence of the Napoleonic Wars, if we just pretended for some reason that they never happened, you would have seen much more uh, private investment in infrastructure, even more than what already occurred. So it's, it's important to note this in uh, just to see, because it's such, a, one, it's such a fascinating explanation, but it also shows that, yeah, the free market can do things. You don't need the government uh, to, to funnel money into various taxpayer boondoggles, et cetera. 